Okay, right. Hope you can see my uh, Mathematica window. Right, so I'm using Mathematica 7 for my uh, demonstrations. Uh, actually, I have used Mathematica 11 also, uh, but it uh, it has a uh, it has actually more capable uh, when it comes to uh, uh, automatically listing uh, functions for suggesting words. Other than that, uh, uh, I prefer to use Mathematica 7. Actually, uh, Mathematica 11 failed to give me an answer, but Mathematica 7 good, so I I lost my trust in Mathematica 11, if you like. So I, I went back to uh, Mathematica 7. Right. So, uh, first of all, uh, um, Unfortunately, I can mark on the uh, screen. Right. So let me uh, introduce uh, as to how we uh, do things in Mathematica. Uh, let me start by convincing you that Mathematica is a powerful software by calculating pi to 10 to the power, say, six decimal places. Okay. So let me uh, in, uh, talk about the function later. So this is Mathematica, 14 to the power, uh, seven, rather six decimal places. Okay. I don't know whether you can do it in MATLAB or even Maple. So you can do this in Mathematica. Now let me, so this is the time to recognize some key features in Mathematica. So uh, you can input any, every function, Every function starts with the capital letter. So n is uh, for numerical uh, numerical value, and every function uh, has a usual, uh, you know, instead of the usual bracket. Uh, let me actually share the whole thing because I'll be needing. Okay, right. So um, every function start with a capital letter and every function has a square bracket and even pi, uh, which is a function, if you like, uh, start with the capital letter, right? So let me, uh, so that the, those are the two key features uh, uh, we identify straight away. And unlike, um, I guess, other software, so you can define anything anywhere. There is no particular order. So, for example, I can say x equals to. Uh, and uh, one more thing, uh, actually, I will write this somewhere. So, otherwise, you will not uh, get the best out of this. Um, if we try to share in the whiteboard, uh, maybe I will use. Uh, I will use. One note, he said. Okay, right. Can you see my one note uh, screen? So we can't see now. Yeah, I'm still new to actually Zoom, right? So forgive me if I'm taking too long. So I should say um, screen. Now we can see, sir. Okay, right. thanks. So, um, so any function? Any function start with with the capital letter, like in this case, capital N. Uh, 
and they have square brackets followed by square brackets. Okay, so the, this, these are the uh, first two things. You can define anything anywhere. You can define anything anywhere. I think you can't do that in MATLAB. So you can define uh, anything in anywhere. You can see my um, Mathematica screen, can you? Yes, sir. Okay, right. So, so, and other thing is you have to use both the shift and enter buttons for uh, execution. Shift plus enter. You have to uh, not just enter button, so I have to use shift plus enter. So uh, I get x equal to. If I actually uh, open another book and press x, um, press um, x. So it is uh, it is also two. So what I'm saying is uh, this variable definition works across. Uh, screens. Okay, so this is one one uh, um, feature, right? Uh, so there is a difference between assigning values for a function and uh, just declare equal, right? So as uh, I will explain, so I can define say y equals x squared. Okay, so the y will be for as expected. But if I press say, x equals um, say three, and press again, you don't, uh, you get the same as before. So what has happened is, uh, so y uh, did not uh, refresh, okay? So, uh, so to avoid that, what you can do is you can express uh, y with sign, something like this, okay? Then uh, if x equals two, uh, of course y will be four. If x equals three, y will be nine. Okay. So there is, understand this uh, difference between assigning and uh, just equal. And this is for assigning. So that is um, one thing. And um, of course, uh, the way to define functions. Um, so this is also a definition, but if you want to uh, you know, use uh, as a normal function, uh, we have to do x underscore. Underscore will tell you that it is a, uh, it is a function that and variable that we are defining. So uh, we can define function like this. It doesn't matter whether x is defined already or not. It doesn't care. So if you put any number, so you will get the value, right? Okay. So this is about function. Um, definition. Definition is by f square brackets x a underscore assigning otherwise it won't change uh, six key something like that okay so I think of uh, if 
for those who have Mathematica with them right now, they can try these things uh, and uh, get the answer. Um, so if you have any questions, you can uh, ask me right now. And uh, this is the time for doing that. At the same time, uh, uh, maybe you are interested in defining piecewise functions. Piecewise is the uh, definition. Okay. So I mean, suppose you don't. Uh, uh, I will also tell you how to use uh, the help. Actually, in Mathematical Eleven, I type. PIE or something, uh, there is a drop down when you're coming, so you don't have to remember. So that is an advantage uh, if you're especially using it now. now. How many of you are actually using uh, advanced versions than Mathematica 7? Do we, so I will uh, try to answer uh, these questions as they come. Do you need to put underscore in, underscore in function? Yes. Right? That is how we define uh, variables. Okay. But uh, maybe in, in programs like C or other things, you have to define whether this is a real variable or integer, and nothing uh, as such is needed. Okay, so I was talking about piecewise uh, function. So let's try to, if you don't remember, of course, the nice thing about Mathematica is this could help. Okay. And you are you can go to uh, these things, and actually you can uh, copy the content right there. Okay, copy the content, and so let's forget about this. Okay, so um, so th what this is saying is you now every so curly bracket is the set. So, I mean, I'll be actually struggling to make them in an ordered way. I'll try my best. Okay. When you see curly brackets, those are sets, but they are ordered sets. Those are arrays, actually. Okay. So, we do not distinguish between uh, uh, sets and arrays. Uh, our sets are already directed, direct, uh, directional arrays. So, I mean, this is uh, the first one. You can see that it is also a... Uh, you don't need this. So this says whenever uh, x is less than zero, it is x squared, and x if x greater than zero. So you can define this as a uh, function. Again, you can overwrite functions in any way you wish. Agree? So this is one of them. So if you want to see it, uh, plot is the uh, function. Okay, let me actually finish uh, what is corresponding to this piecewise function. So there are like two brackets, say G1, G1 uh, when X is whatever, right? Okay and g2x say i mean let's take an example less than one and g2x if x greater than equal one okay so this is how you define a p size function okay then let's try to plot this plot uh, is again a function everything is a function so plot is a function and then the function is fx, and uh, you have to put the starting uh, the, the variable is x, uh, then uh, the range, say from uh, so negative two to two, right? So this will define the define the function. So what? looks like fx where x goes from a to b. 
right? So any question at this stage? Any question at this stage? So what I will do is actually, I mean, there is no point in doing something without any reason. There are, you know, thousands of uh, examples, thousands of functions uh, for us to uh, work on. Maybe I will, I will uh, talk about uh, loops a little bit and then uh, go to a function, right? So, um, Yeah, yeah. So one asks, uh, can we define piecewise functions in more than two parts? Yes, absolutely, yes. How the people ask how to clear the screen? Actually, uh, you just clear, uh, just select and clear. <laughs> that is one way. I mean, okay, that is one way. Uh, oh, actually, uh, one of the uh, things that you want to do is to clear the variable. Okay, so uh, to clear the variable, the command is we have x now defined as long as you are all right that to clear that it will remain uh, x equal to even across files. So clear, clear uh, is the uh, command uh, that will clear x. You can see uh, when this is cleared, they are you know given in blue color. Okay. So then there is no value assigned to X. So the important thing I want you to understand is how to, I mean, it is actually easier in Mathematica to guess the next step. For example, if there are three, uh, you know, if you want to more than, more than three uh, parts, you can define it like this. Okay. Something like this. Okay, so you can define it in the same way. Can you do for x cube? I don't get that. What do you mean by x cube? Now, maybe I don't know whether you're asking about this. I mean, because uh, this is a later, I mean, you can see that uh, the, the the inputs and outputs are labeled according to the uh, sequence. So, so because uh, this is a low level uh, definition, this is a high level definition, uh, this is O-ring. So if you go, uh, if you, uh, if you uh, redefine fx as x u, so uh, you, you change your function, okay? And the piece is x cube. You want to say that this is x cube? Second one, right? Otherwise, there is no point in you know, x cube. Maybe you want to. Yeah, you can do anything, right? Not x cube, sign x also. Okay. I understand. Uh, if not, uh, you can speak and tell me uh, whether that is what you want. Okay. So let me go uh, ahead. So we know how to. Let me uh, tell myself as to what I have done. We have done about assigning. We have done about functions. We have done piecewise functions. We have plot and. Uh, Next thing I would like to do, actually the variables can be functions themselves. Now this is something interesting. Now suppose you want to define, you want to get a function and uh, square it. Uh, shall we do it? Actually I'm, I'm not, 
I have not done image processing using this. So my idea is today to get a basic, uh, basic idea about this. But of course I can get used to and maybe do uh, image processing with Mathematica in a later, later class. Other people will not, for example, I mean, I can see from the questions that was asked from me, uh, there are people with uh, very little knowledge about Mathematica. We, we will certainly go for something, uh, something practical after uh, these few steps. Okay. Or you tell me uh, whether we, we have to go, go there right now. What I feel is, so uh, we will, uh, because if you know the starting, we, we can uh, improve ourselves. That's what I did, no one taught me. Um, okay. Right. So the interesting about uh, this one is you can actually pass a variable. Now you can let uh, functions also be variables. Okay, so they, they will look like that. So what you do is, uh, for example, you get the function and square that and add the function, something like that. Okay. So then, uh, of course, uh, this f does not mean the previous, although we have f. And to um, know your function, you can put uh, this uh, question mark and then f and then shift and enter. Right. So this will tell you what your uh, current definition is. Okay, so that is also important. So uh, question mark F means um, current definition. Right, so let's uh, work with this function. So G, so GF, GFX, Oh, maybe let's go for an easier x. Gx, fx equals x cube. Right, so gfx is x3 plus x. Okay, so I mean, if we define h of x as say sine x, the you know, sine is. Uh, So G, uh, H, say Y, uh, because now y is, y is already defined, okay? So I can clear Y and this will be the equation. What I have, what I never done is, let me see if this is working with a sign, you know, it is interesting to, let's try a simple sign. Okay, right? Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, it's it's logical. So, mathematics understand what just sign means. So, we define uh, variables, uh, then, now. Uh, we will really have to plan our uh, so it is like half an hour. So I think I don't have to tell you even functions can be variables. Functions can be variables. Um, so what else uh, shall we talk about? Then uh, let's talk about lists. I think that will be the next one. So um, you know, something like this will be a list. Let's talk about sets first. Okay, so there is a difference between list and sets. Um, let's talk about uh, lists, say arrays. array of say f 
again. So let me use a different letter. See, is ten. Yeah, so one asking whether we can use uh, simple letters for sign. No, uh, for built-in functions, you have to use you have to start with capital letters. But the function that you define, okay, if the function uh, you are defining the function, then uh, uh, you can have any any uh, letter you, as you please. Okay, so this is an array. So this will define. Uh, uh, actually, you don't have to define arrays. You can define as we go. We don't have to start with any array. For example, if we say, so we can, we have the idea of we, we can we have the uh, uh, freedom of defining what is B1 means. Say B1 is three. Agree. At the same time, if you want to uh, declare several uh, lines, you can. Uh, Define that you can separate them by this corner, right? Okay, so this means several several commands in the same input. Okay. B1 is 3. Um, we uh, say 2 equals 7. And suppose we did not define what B is. So say B, um, B, B did not uh, say B4 equals 13. OK. So this is it. Uh, then, if we say the same thing with uh, array B, suppose I have like six, six elements. So it will, uh, it will only replaces the one that is already assigned. At the same time, um, if you want to, so let me actually define. Okay, let me finish the discussion and define it. Suppose you want to start the start the um, index in zero. Okay, right. So let me clear clear B. Suppose I want to start the index with zero. Then uh, it doesn't. Oh, I didn't execute that. Right. Okay. So, so what is that? Now tell me. I mean, is this writing writing here is uh, essential, or what do you think? That will save my time if I'm not. What do you think about writing on the notepad? Is it essential according to your understanding, or is this needed? Um. What I'm saying is array. If I say array B six zero, it will give me B zero. That is the first one, and B one and B two dot dot up to B six. Okay. Ah, uh, what are they saying? Okay, right. Yeah. So you can actually collect this, uh, collect this after that. And now it's up to you. Now the interesting thing about Mathematica is you can guess what is going on. Suppose this is a two-dimensional array. What shall we do? I want a two-dimensional array. I will be given any certificate. <laughs> so I think you can see the request. Uh, 
you have to ask from the mathematics society are you uh, are you uh, going from sri lanka or are you are you uh, from any other place dia malhotra maybe you are from india i don't know okay now uh, certificates are not given uh, i i don't know i don't think our mathematics society has uh, any idea of doing so right, so two dimensional arrays the important thing is uh, you try to define uh, try to guess what is that is so if we see the two dimensional array then uh, six was the number of elements so this must be rows and columns suppose i i get three rows and two columns and uh, zero means and now it becomes two elements. this is uh, zero is where you start your rows and the one is where you start your columns okay so you can see uh, it has uh, this is a row of rows okay so this this is the first row this is the second row this is the third row so they automatically become columns right so you are starting uh, the the row with zero so rows are one, zero one two columns are one two three uh, sorry one two okay Right. So if you want to, um, um, so multi, say not multi. I mean, yeah, it's two D array. Okay, two D array. Two D array, sir. You um, and Y array. Say C uh, from. Say M N, starting from I don't know sub two is zero one, right? Okay, right. Uh, so you can define uh, elements in any way you like. Actually, it's it's recently I I worked started working with arrays. Uh, I was working with sets. Sets are a little different. I'll come back to that maybe later. And if you want them in matrix uh, form, so at the same time, I I would like to say percentage sign is the percentage sign is the previous answer. Okay, so when I say previous answer slash Slash. I think double slash. No matrix form. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh uh, no! So percentage percentage means uh, one before that. Okay. So matrix form. Uh, Double slash matrix form is uh, as a matrix. Just uh, show you uh, as a matrix form. Double slash matrix form as you know shown as a matrix. Right. Um. Any. I think yeah, this is how you start any any language, isn't it? Uh, so I have few more questions. Okay. Some people are uh, oh, okay. So they are answering uh, each other. Okay. okay. Right. So this is it. Uh, we know how to define arrays. Um, yes. Anyone having a question? I think we have some idea of defining uh, defining um, arrays. Um, then I would like to talk about loops, at least few loops. Um, let's talk about the for loop. 
for loop um, so a typical one would be equals one so remember a for loop is also a function it has four slots okay it has four slots uh, say y equals one i less than equals 10 and i plus plus the same as i plus i plus one okay and then print i will give you uh, what is the difference between MATLAB and Mathematica? I mean, you will see uh, Mathematica is better. I actually want you to understand yourself after this, but uh, we will see Mathematica is good for uh, symbolic calculations, right? So let me do the for loop. Maybe you are not, uh, maybe you are writing it in a different way. Uh, 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 with other languages so uh, if you don't want it you can you know even write it like this it doesn't matter right it's, it's up to you right it's up to you uh, so let's try to execute it so this is what you get right so for loop is a for loop is a um, four slots i equals one I less than equal 10, uh, I plus plus, and whatever you want, okay? Whatever you want, they, they, it can be more than one, okay? Do, do uh, whatever here, okay? Then there are, there is the do loop, okay? It's very similar to, uh, for loop but you can uh, give the conditions easily uh, it's like plot if you like okay i 1 to 10 let's see what happens okay so you um, if you want to do a repeated loop you can do this or you can uh, do do print print i I goes from uh, zero to one, uh, zero to one. So I don't have to tell you the, the the variance of this. For example, if you want to do only two numbers, you know, go by print uh, all the numbers. I can you can put the fourth uh, slot. That means go from one to ten with the space of two. Okay, something like this. So this is equal to two. Uh, I equals I plus two. Okay. Right. So that is it. If you want to go for uh, go by, you know, say un different increments, say say in five steps, that's also possible. Okay. That's also possible. So that is the do loop. Okay. So we have the while loop. Um, uh, also, I mean, which uh, which is not very useful for me at least. Uh, and another thing uh, is the table. Table will uh, basically generate the set. Okay, the difference between do loop and table is table actually generate the set, generate an array, say a table of i squares. Table of i squares, I going from say 1 to 10, will uh, generate a square uh, set. No, you cannot change the order. You cannot change the order for 4. 4 is a function. Okay? Uh, 4 is a function. Uh, so you cannot change the order. First one is where you start. Second one is where you end. Third one is what you do to I, what are the increments. And fourth one is uh, what you are doing. Okay, so that is it. Uh, I mean, if you like, we can do the while loop also. While say I less than equals 
second uh, then what you do if you if you want to uh, say two things you um, uh, state it here say print i'm not using this one very much say i i guess i plus plus will work no i think you will you need the bracket okay then you have to say what i say one let's see whether uh let's see work. okay right so while work uh, loop works like this uh so what did this bracket mean if you want to uh, do several things at the same time so while has only two slots you can uh, go back No, I think uh, this also worked, but according to them, they had used a different uh, colon. My, my one is also fine. So what they want is uh, this, uh, the other colon. Okay, right. So while uh, that is why. So table is table, table uh, say i squared, i goes from zero to one. Uh, I will uh, also put this uh, one, then you know that uh, there are, so this is a, there are, you know, uh, modification of this produce, produce the um, array. Or in other words, in the uh, while loop, say i equals one, while um, i say less than equal 10, say print i, and then i plus plus. Okay, I think that's it uh, before we go for a, something okay anything else uh, that I have missed that you want to you want to um, so I have done uh, variables variables defining functions how to plot things um, then arrays, 2D arrays, then basically loops. I think that's all. Then only two more things, I guess. So once you uh, define something like this, uh, they can, uh, you can use uh, you can try to the table okay suppose you want to plot this table okay so a is the table if you don't want to see the content, contents you can put the this colon then uh, the output will not be shown but it is actually loaded into a okay right then list plot list plot a will plot uh, right so this is kind of discrete plot okay so what should i say um, at the end if you use this that means uh don't show so list plot we spot the table discrete plot and one more thing uh, actually I should have mentioned this uh, I want to talk about if uh, okay let me the other thing that we'll be using frequently so um, so if say <coughs> x greater than 2 if, if it has three parts, 
So this is to do what to do when x is greater than zero. Say, um, say print, print star. Okay. Then uh, what to do otherwise? Else, uh, you don't have to say else. Else is the next one. Say print. Uh, I don't know percentage. I don't know how the percentage is dangerous. Double. I think you will need. You will need. Uh, let's just say say three and. Four. Right. So let's say x equals three. So we are expecting uh, four. I'm sorry, sorry. We are expecting three, which is true. If x is say one, so this statement is false. So we are expecting four. I think if you want to uh, have a, uh, what do you call the character table, I think you have to use uh, this column. Let me let me see whether this is true. I'm hardly using them. Uh, just let's first try star. I don't think they will work. Yeah. So I think you have to say character by these things. Okay, so that is also important. So it has three slots. Condition, do, so do if true, do if false. So that is a condition, right? On the other hand, so remember this if statement, uh, there is nothing called equal to, okay? So because equal to is um, not logical to, uh, logically equal. So, you know, when it comes to logic, you must allow uh, even non-equality also handled by equality. For example, if X is three, x equal to 2 is wrong, right? So for that case, you are using double equal, right? So uh, we are expecting two stars here. So if this is true, two, uh, you should get one star. Okay, so several questions again. Yeah, now uh, 3D graphs. Uh, how can you calculate integrals? So yeah, I'll be coming back. I'll be coming very soon to uh, Integrals, how to get the software, how can you calculate integrals? Yes. Um, how we can get the software, I will not tell you anything at this stage. But uh, I think you can, uh, like, uh, what is that? AutoCAD? Like AutoCAD, you can officially register with uh, uh, Mathematica. Is it true? Anyone uh, has done that? Anyway, if you have actually registered with Mathematica or your Wolfram Alpha, uh, you can uh, tell your experience. Maybe we can talk about it after that. Can we draw 3D graphs? Yes, I'll, I'll be uh, coming, back, coming to that. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so I was talking about uh, character. So that is also important. Right, so this is C, character C. At the same time, uh, double equal. This is this is actually like, oh no, no, no. So this is true, double equal. So this is like, um, you know, if A, B. So this is same as 
a logically this statement okay logically that statement okay which can be true or false which can be true or false right on the other hand i mean this can work um, as any logical So, um, so x equals two. For example, if I say x equals three, and ask if x is equal to three, answer is true. That is a uh, that is a, uh, it's a logical statement. This is two. Uh, is x equals three is false. Right. So I guess if um, a greater than three uh, is false, right? Okay. So likewise, you know. So this is working with logical statements. Logical uh, statements. Logical statements. Like say x greater than three. No, I don't. We, we don't need a variable for that. So say two greater than one. So which will give you true okay because we, we, we there is no end to this I know, right so that i mean because we talk about logical statements so uh, true double and is the end statement true and uh, True and false is false. Okay, so this is and. I think you can use usual and also invert and. and this is O is that. I don't know which one will be useful for uh, your program. So, and. So this is and. And this is O. And this is not. So that is to work with um, logical variables. So I will ask the only one question that I can answer at this point is whether um, we can plot 3D graphs. Absolutely, yes. So let's define a, a 2D uh, graph fxy. SX squared x squared say plus y squared okay and plot now you can i uh, should be able to guess uh, what we should be doing so plot uh, 3d that may be the only thing you cannot guess otherwise effects y so x range say negative one to one and y range negative one to one so get the graph. And of course you can rotate, rotate it by uh, uh, mouse. Okay. And of course you can upload several uh, functions together. Say x, y, and this, uh, and this one. Okay, so. So you, you draw the same function, functions on the same graph. Okay, so let me also uh, 3D plot. 3D plot by plot 3D. Um, f x y x goes from a to b and y goes from c to d okay so are we ready now i think 
um, this is kind of enough basic knowledge. Maybe you also want to say uh, parame parametrically plot something. Okay, so parametric plot, suppose you want to, uh, so we have to see, we have to uh, tell what x is. Say suppose x is cosine t, you can say what y is, y is say sine t, sine t. And then we um, would like to uh, tell what the range of t is. This is a parametric plot, as you can see. So you can even go for 3D uh, with parametric. Right, I think uh, you need to increase the dimension. And suppose C is T. Okay, I think uh, you're expecting a spiral or something. Okay, so this is it. Okay, so if there are two variables, you will get a surface. Okay, so you will be, you will be getting a surface if um, we have different, uh, you know. Okay, so it's a surface. Surfaces are two variable, two variable uh, functions. So this is 3D. Okay, I think maybe I will mention that as the last point. So this is like function of t, function of t. Oh, I'm sorry, this is all close brackets. And t goes from a to b. So this will parametrically plot. It. Right, I think this is enough uh, information for can we visualize functions of complex variables? We can draw the we can draw the uh, real imaginary uh, graph. For example, say suppose c squared. You want to do uh, x plus i y. So if you want to visualize x plus i y squared, okay, i i uh, complex i means capital I. Okay, so uh, if you want to uh, separate the real part, so oh, I think our uh, x is already. Yeah. Okay, so let me actually try a uh, real part sometime before I have done this. Uh, maybe complex expand. Okay, yeah, so this is giving uh, me that because X can have, X and Y can be uh, uh, 
complex themselves, right? So I can put, uh, so let me do the imaginary part also. Right, now what I can do is I can put, can do a parameter plot. No, actually, I can uh, I can just plot three D thing. This is one way of. This is the real part. X and Y won't be complex in this situation. Right, so this is the real part of Z squared graph. This is the imaginary part. So that is something. Um, maybe there are more complex, more uh, sophisticated uh, methods of sorting uh, uh, complex functions, maybe in Riemann surfaces. I have to see that, right? So maybe it's good to ask that question because this is the first time we are doing complex things. So I uh, is usual I, so real, real part and imaginary part. And complex expand, remember this can be helpful for you. Complex expand. So it simplifies uh, a complex expression. So actually there are ways to say that X is real and there we can't remember some of these things. So you better learn. Uh, there are ways to say that uh, X is not real, so it gives you an easy answer in this situation. Yeah, 3D motion available. There are some. There is something called animate that can be used. For example, some people are talking about uh, functions. So suppose we do animate is a way to visualize things. Say we can do sign. Um, no. So let's do plot. Okay, plot sign. Say k x. Plot sign k x and less plot x from negative two pi to pi. But, uh, we will change the k in the process. K goes from say zero to ten in steps of point one. So this is something you can try. So uh, see what is happening. Okay. 
so I can, uh, for example, here I can come and see um, label. Not label K will tell what K is. So you can see what, what is K. Then graph is what. Something like animate plot. Okay, so you, you try with this. Uh, say a function of x and t say you are putting x from a to b plot is over and then animate variable say time say 0 to 10 so this will animate effects with respect to t Good for teaching, actually. I'm, I'm using this for uh, teaching very much. So there may be uh, 3D versions also, which uh, does not come to my mind. So uh, I think uh, this is enough. Uh, this is all only <coughs> one hour. So are we ready to do something? Um, some project kind of a thing. Any questions up to this one? I think we have done uh, basic stuff up now. Uh, any question from this? Electrical diagram. You mean uh, Yeah, partial differential equations. I will. This is exactly what I'm trying to come to now. So I think um, electrical. Maybe I don't know whether you are talking about electrical circuit solving, like in mathematics. MATLAB. In mathematics, it happens with it. There are separate. It's not like uh, you don't have a simulink like in uh, MATLAB. But you have to get uh, separate package for that and load the package okay so that is something so people a lot of people are asking about differential equations and partial differential equations so let me uh, do something uh, shall we uh, start that or are we are we having questions on this these areas still can we get going now Can we get going now? I think, uh, yes, let's talk about um, differential equations, ODEs to start with. Okay, so um, how to solve, okay. <laughs> Maybe you'll talk about root of equations first because solving partial differential equation is uh, a part of uh, is more complex than that so how to solve the equations say something like fx equals zero so there are actually several uh, several uh, built-in functions for that uh, one is root other one is solve so these, these are the kind of uh, analytical solutions. And you have n root and n solve. So those are the numerical versions. And of course, uh, there is another one uh, called uh, find root, as I can remove. So let's try one of them. Um, 
Um, so let's talk about an easy case. Uh, I was doing last time. Okay, let, let's talk about uh, actually the polynomials first minus x minus one. So this is something I have been trying. So we can plot the plot and see what is actually going on. Maybe you plot it zero. So you know where the uh, <clears throat> the roots are. So it looks as if there are two roots. Actually, there is a built-in function called uh, count roots. This was very useful for me. That is why I know about it. Count roots. So it is actually count the number of roots in a polynomial equation, right? Count roots. Um, f f x equals zero. The variable is x. I think this must be the Maybe only a fix. Right, yeah, okay, right. This is uh, this counting roots. Uh, not, uh, this is actually not a numerical method, but is known as the uh, Strom sequence. We are using something known as the Strom sequence. So if you want to specify a region, say variable X, how many roots are between say zero and two? I think this must be the symbol one, right? Okay, so the nice thing about mathematics is you can guess uh, this. Okay, now what are the roots? I think, let's try this, I will do this for, a... so this is giving exact answers. Now some people are asking, some people are asking uh, about the difference between Mathematica and uh, MATLAB. So this is giving all the real actual answers. Now I think you know from uh, this is a fact in, uh, mathemat uh, in mathematics is that uh, you can solve uh, up to fourth degree. You can solve, explicitly solve uh, polynomial equations up to uh, the power four. After that, there are no general solutions. Uh, so Mathematica uh, can't give solutions after four. All right, so if you want the uh, exact answers, I think you know what to do. Numerical value, previous thing, so, right? So if you want to say uh, 100 decimal places for each, Right, so these are the solutions. Last two are the uh, real solutions. Okay, last two are the real solutions. But if you change uh, four to five, you clearly see that uh, you can't do anything. Right, I think what, what they're saying is this is the root of this equation number one, root of this equation number two, right? Okay, that is a symbol. I think I can still use in, uh, this symbol. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we have one, two, of course there will be five roots, three, four, five, and only one of them is, only one of them is real. Okay, only one now uh, miss uh, real now. All the other roots are complex, right? So this is it. So then you have to go for, now uh, this is roots. I think n roots will give you directly uh, the numerical value, I guess. Yes. Okay, so if you use n roots, uh, you'll get the answer. I think you can, Increase the number of digits by, let's try. So 
So let's go for in roots. Okay, so I want to uh, talk about uh, one more thing here. Uh, this is regarding No, uh, it does not give you a method to increase the number of digits. Usually, they, they are given uh, here with uh, other other options. Maybe I will come back to that. It doesn't specifically give a max iterations, number of iterations method. And one more thing, actually, I would like to uh, uh, comment here. Earlier, Mathematica was giving a the algorithm. Earlier, Mathematica was giving algorithm uh, for each of the functions. Actually, it's not giving uh, explicitly these days. Okay, so maybe later we'll see how we can increase the accuracy in ten rows. Okay, so let's see that. And uh, what is it? So when it comes to um, say non polynomials, you can see that the condition is still so e is e to the power, then that is something you'd like to know. So e is e, right? So at the same time, e x p x is you can write it like e to the power x. So e is a capital letter again. Uh, and of course, pi is pi. Mm. So e to the power x, okay, minus x. Uh, we can plot the plot tensor. So there is a root right there. I don't know if count roots actually work. At least try. Yeah, actually, it works. Maybe now it has to use numerical methods. Okay. Now it has to uh, use numerical methods. Even that is working, right? That's interesting. Okay. So uh, so these things will not work. So uh, let's try to use um, soul. So let's try to uh, see whether we get any answers. Yeah, so soul actually cannot, looks to be, uh, uh, you know, doesn't seem to be, uh, giving us the answer, then I think there was something called ensol. so you can try all this. Yes, I think uh, this ensol and these things are for basically linear function solving. I think that, but I have the last resort, that is the one I have been using uh, so many times, that is find root. Find root is, uh, Definitely working uh, function. So what you have to do is the x variable, and of course a, a nearby x value. You have to give a starting point, say zero. So this is basically uh, basically um, a numerical method. I think you can even here uh, improve the precision.
like this, right? So it is giving uh, under places. So let me actually now, uh, because it is giving an option, I can check that, uh, find root. The options must be listed there. So there, this is what I was saying. Now here you have uh, the option uh, to give you, rather than giving you answers, uh, not only giving you answers, but it gives you options. So under options, you can see uh, what are the improvements do, what are the improvements you can do. So accuracy goal, uh, uh, like in this case, working precision. So all these are given with examples, you can uh, count on that. Right. Okay. So this is very important. I don't know whether you get the same thing in other places. Applications. So I mean, of course, uh, the most important thing may be uh, similar, similar uh, functions downstairs. Okay. Similar functions downstairs. So you can uh, explore the similar ones uh, without uh, typing, without actually knowing uh, what to do. Okay. Okay, I think uh, this is it. Time to go for differential equations. Uh, differential equation, I think, did I uh, say what to do? So at least you knew. So you have to uh, explore. So these are uh, solving equations. So you have to try some of them. I can't remember exactly. So you have to uh, try those. So let's talk about differential equations because a lot of people have been talking about it. Um, so let's talk about the easy, easy one. Uh, say D solve is the uh, function. So let's talk about the easy case. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about say y prime plus say x squared y equals say x for example and uh, say y1 equals 2, okay? So this is uh, what we have. So let's include that. Equals uh, x, I said. Right, so let's try without the boundary condition. Then uh, where uh, you are solving for y x, the variable is x. Okay, so this is giving uh, the exact solution. So you will never ever, you will never ever. Um, I, I think it's not. So Mathematica actually, MATLAB has uh, something called the. Uh, Symbolic uh, MATLAB, but I, I don't think uh, you get a similar uh, expressions. Uh, and there is one, because this is first order differential equation, like you are getting one constant. And if you want to give the boundary condition right there, so that can be the second part of uh, your differential equation. Okay, we are saying y1. Remember, this is not just equal, but logical equal, equal to. So this is, this is that. So yeah, you should get uh, the, uh, the constant evaluated. Constant evaluated. Then if you want to plot this, for example, maybe one way is, uh, one way is, one way is actually copy this. This will be kind of boring to do, but of course you can do that. Okay, so let's, let's call it say HX. So you can, you can do that. And there is absolutely, uh, or you can even check of one means. So then the numerical value should give me two. Okay. 10 to the power minus 16. 
right? So that is one way of doing it. Of course, you can plot. Uh, check. So what? And it starts from J one. One two. Uh, Zero is dangerous. So let's go to the other, go the other way. One to three. Okay, so we have a we have a situation like this to this side. Here, of course, you'll not be able to go all the way because you are by zero. Yeah. Okay. So there are there are restrictions. So you are expecting trouble. You are expecting trouble uh, near zero because uh, you know when we solve this, you you know that you will be divided by x and so on. Right? So that is right there. Look at this. Okay. Okay. So you are expecting a different answer. I mean, you are expecting two sides to this. One is uh, to the right of zero, the other one is to the left of zero. Okay, so that is differential equation knowledge. I'm not going to uh, go over that here. Okay, right. so let's talk about the, the solution to the right of one. Uh, and this is the solution. Are there other, other methods of, uh, you know, plotting the graph easily without assigning? Yes, this is one way. So remember, this is a general method. If you have, say, x squared, and if you want to evaluate x squared at x equal to, there is a short way. You can do slash dot x goes to 2. Right? So this will evaluate uh, whatever the uh, function there. So that is something uh, new again. Okay? So there are no limits to uh, uh, the functions. So x squared, rather than defining it from the beginning, doing this so this will give you uh force let's say two squared which is four okay evaluating x squared at 2. Right. Um, so let's do a let's, uh, let's do the differential equation. So shall we, can we use the same uh, scenario to get the answer? Get, you know, use this as a variable. So what you can do is, can say y x. See what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I can say y x slash dot. This whole thing. Okay. Let me let me say this is s. Okay. So what about y x slash dot s? Let's try to plot this. X. We are going one way. X goes from Z1 to 3. I don't know whether this will work. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So um, I think there, there are, I mean, if you look at this carefully, this has like two brackets. It, does, it seems that it, it is not really, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So this is it. Or you can even redefine the function. This may be the only thing I don't like about Mathematica, this uh, arrow sign, but uh, I had to leave it there. Okay. So, um, but there are ways around, which I have found, as I have found. What I can do is, I can redefine the function like this, okay, which is yx slash, slash dot x, which I mean, whenever yx appears, uh, you have to put this. Okay, then that is one way I think this should work. So just say yx. I think this must be working. 
now they are issued. So if you want to stop that, uh, that's also something you must learn. So evaluate, go to evaluate, in kernel, focus, we we'll stop, we we'll stop Mathematica, right? Okay. So maybe that is not working. I think so. We have to re re. Uh, so when you stop it, so I will I will write it also here. How to stop Mathematica? That's also important. Stop. So what to do is uh, evaluation kernel. Is it? What is that? Evaluation with kernel log. Okay. Right, so this is how to stop Mathematica. So we'll have to give a, give a try uh, for this. I see, right? At least one of them was working. You directly uh, you do that. Okay, so it's only by playing in these things you will maybe double double bracket is a problem here. Yeah. Anyway, this was working, right? So this was working. Um, slash dot test. So is it yeah, yeah. Export as uh, so you can save. Maybe I will come back to that then. Anyway, so uh, what I did, I sold this analytically. There is analytic solution, uh, and I got the answer. And what to do? Uh, shall we talk about numerical solutions? Okay. So this is analytical solutions. Did I say that? Yeah. Maybe I will. So analytical solution. Is this all? This all give the function close bracket plus uh, what is that? X squared, X squared Y X equal to equal to x y x and x okay so numerical solution uh, is nd sol nd sol um, same thing let me see I can't remember x squared y x. I think we have to go for I guess it's only y and x starting at some point. No, no, no because this is numerical method, you will have to give it uh, the boundary condition. Okay, you'll have to give it the boundary condition. That is y one equals two, and of course y will be I think it's y only, and then x you have to tell the range of x say from x equals one to say five. Let's try that. Uh, So we are going for numerical solutions. 
everything is fine. I think this is only Y. And then you have to give the X range. X from say one to five. Let's see whether this will work. I think this is fine. Say plot yx dot slash dot s. Exactly, I mean, I'm trying to make these two, two methods work, uh, you know, in the, in the same way. So x going from one to four, one to five. Okay, right? So it works. So let me do this again with our analytical solution. I want to compare and show you that uh, same thing works. But y x so at least this was working right okay so uh, then we went for this one and then this was working I if you want to want to have a number so if you want to say what y3 is uh, y3 is You should get the answer, right? Okay. You see the y value at three. Right, okay. Uh, that is one of them. Any any doubt about any any further classification? Clarification? Are you following? Hello. Right, any questions up to this? So we, we, we analytically solved a differential equation and we numerically solved a differential equation. Do you need, uh, actually I will do one more thing. Yes. Hello. Are you following? Any 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 explanation required? Slash those meant. Uh, is you are putting is, is something like you are putting S2 this now it's like this uh, if you look at this you see uh, S is that S is like Y implying and Y you know Y is equal to this interpolating function Y equal to a you know bunch of numerical values that's what you are saying I remember in the earlier case when you say x slash dot, x goes to 2. So let me do x squared. x goes to 3. So it is 9. So remember, look, look at this, this side. This is like x goes x going to 3. It is not a limit. x is uh, sine 3. So it sees that, that expression now. Can you see that? It's y. Then what you're doing is uh, get y and put that expression. Yes. This is not a you know, single entity now. It is something like x arrow 3. x is something x arrow 3 already. So whatever the uh, s is put onto y. I'm not entirely happy about this uh, arrow thing. That may be the only thing I hate about Mathematica. <laughs> Other than that, uh, you know, it's fine. I actually do not like this very much. I don't know why they are not giving uh, Y value directly. Maybe they are using uh, 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 this function was written some time back. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Any other question? 
So as the final method, so we have done numerical, we have done analytical. Let, let us do this. Uh, let us actually do one numerical. So we will write, uh, write one numerical method directly. So what is that numerical method? So this is called the Euler's method. So what you basically do is, uh, we have the, if we have y prime equal to fx y, what you do, you uh, do Taylor series on y. Okay, then what is that? Yx equal to uh, y at a given point. So in this situation, I can take the example. We are saying y1 equals to, so uh, y1 plus y prime over y prime 1, then uh, x minus 1, and so on. Okay, right? So we ignore this. Right? But y1 is 2. What is y prime 1? What is y prime 1? y prime 1 is you can find the derivative using this equation. Right? That is f of uh, 1 and y1, which is 2. And x minus 1. So we can find y uh, at a at a, uh, of course, if you go too far, you will be wrong. So what we'll do is uh, we will uh, not go too far. Okay, x let x be the next x will be smaller. So what you can do is so you can actually start from one. We are planning uh, to go to five. What we can do is we can uh, slice slice this into smaller pieces. Okay, say so h is one of them. So uh, suppose we are doing n numbers, in in uh, in uh, slices, in uh, say intervals. So you are uh, if you are using n intervals. So this is this is four by n number of. Uh, I mean four by n will be the uh, length of an interval, right? Then. Um, x k x will be the first x plus k times h okay so we are uh, increasing x like this so what will happen x zero will be one and x uh, n x n will be one plus n h so n h will be four so this is five so nth one is the last one, okay, and yk, so if the problem is, if you know this, this y, what is this y, okay, so what is that, so you already calculated this by the previous one, yk plus one will be previous y plus h times f of uh, previous x and previous y, okay, so we will use this information to find this, this information to find this, and we will uh, do that up to five, right? So this is, now you have to write a loop. We have to define a function, and let's see what not that happened. And maybe as the last uh, example. So what do we have to do? So let's define h first. We don't know what n is. Okay, let's say in thousand or something. Okay, so we'll define h by i minus uh, phi minus one divided by divided by n. So that is one of them. So I think before that we had to identify what fx is. What is fx here? If example, what is fx? Fx is uh, what you get in the right hand side uh, when we uh, put all this to the other side. So the equation we are interested in is so y prime equals uh, what is that minus x squared y plus x. So this is my 
fx1. Okay, so they, they should look like y prime equals fxy. Right. So, so let's define the function fxy as minus x squared minus x squared uh, y plus x. Okay. Right, so what should we do? We have to give the starting point. So x0, let it be 1. And y0, let it be 2. Agree? Then what? So you have to uh, run this loop. So I can even do, uh, do, do, right? So what are we supposed to do? Uh, we have to do let x be let's write a for loop to, so it's the same thing right k equals one k less than equals n k plus plus okay then what do we need to do we have to um Find the new k. How do we find the new k? That is equal to all k, all k plus h. That is the new x. And what is new y? New y is all y. Shall I say because this is k minus one? Shall I say this is k? This is k minus one. Same as the numbers then. Y all y h times f of uh, all x and new x. No, all y. All x and all y. Right, maybe on each step we can plot uh, x and y. Right, we can plot. Uh, do we need? I think we will not need all of that. So let me print just for fun, right? Print. We are going to print x, k, x, k, and y, k. And of course, uh, we will print k two. Right. So this should work. So we define the function. Uh, n is thousand. Now uh, let's go for a smaller number, the hundred. Uh, H is this one. X zero is one. Y zero is two. So we are printing first and then increasing x accordingly. Now see, so there are several uh, variables, several things we are doing. Okay, let me actually illustrate by this. I'm printing it, uh, increasing x, increasing y, and this this one right there is the uh, is, is this bracket. Okay, right there. Okay. So it seems that there is a problem. I don't know that. Oh, this one right there. I need this bracket. This uh, column. Okay, at least. Right. 
Um, maybe, I mean, there are a lot of, you can do a lot of things here. Maybe you don't even actually uh, put this in, uh, you don't even uh, want to put this in a uh, variable, uh, in array, because you can replace them as we go, right? So that is one of the ways of doing this. Uh, but still, this should work. So when you put k equals one, we now put in k equals one, we are saying zero. Mm. Actually, we will not need, uh, let's try without any variables, without any, so we are just saying x equals zero. And we are saying, why is just why? That could be the reason why we we are getting the answer, <laughs> we'll have to stop this. Okay, so what, what is happening is we are not saying numerical value. Right there. Actually, it is giving the exact answer. Now you can see how Mathematica is doing. So let's say numerical value, otherwise we have been in trouble. Numerical value, say uh, two places. Here, yeah, I, think, I think that uh, is not going to be wrong, right? Okay. Mm. What is If you can spot the error, you can tell me. New x is all x plus h. New i is all y plus h times f of all x all y. this for 10 places.
Or maybe um, Yeah, it can't be a problem because we are not replacing that. I cannot figure out at the moment what is going on. So in the meantime, do you have any question or any suggestions here? Usually this is only one or two lines that this we are defining new Y as all Y plus F of all X all Y. Right. Okay, okay, right. I think we have not cleared this, and this is why. Let's go for a for very small in Right point to zero, right? Is that what you're getting for uh, five? What is that? So we only already got the answer. What is uh, y five, right? So we have to do it right there. We will do that again. We will clear, clear Y. It's also already. So, uh, yeah, so this is fine. We draw that. And here uh, we are asking for fine, right? Slash dot test. And okay, point zero two at least. Okay, point zero two. So what you can do is, if you don't want to see all this is happening, you can put this colon and say print print y. 
say maybe the 200 places are not enough. So we can go for 100. We can go for 100, but we will not print anything. Okay, so all that is gone. All that is gone. Okay, right? Print Y at the end of the day. Going right, so we can increase increase the number. Okay, so now that number is same as at this point zero, so we can copy this one. Uh, that was that. It is. Okay, so that is, that is the number 211650. Right. Okay, so at least that is over. Um, so we, you know, so you have to do these things always to, you know, get the, get in touch with these things. So we did uh, find the uh, analytical solution. We find the numerical solution uh, built in the, uh, in the program. And of course we, we wrote code uh, and uh, directly find the value, found the value. Right, I think that's all uh, we can do. Uh. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, I think. Uh, so, uh, shall we move on to the uh, Q and A session, sir? Sorry. If the, if the, shall we move on to the uh, Q and A session? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, that was already on as I as I thought. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for the informative and interesting session, sir. Uh, I think we have covered all the questions. Uh, if there are any question else mm -hmm. or, or any uh, clarification, uh, you can put on the chat or uh, you can unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move on. One more thing I did not uh, uh, answer is how to solve partial differential equations. So, so if you take this for example, the partial derivatives are given by dfxy. dfxy x means, uh, okay, I think we have to clear dx as well. Okay, dfx x means, uh, I think why is, why is also written. Right, so this will give you the partial derivative of f with respect to x and this will give us the partial derivative of uh, f with respect to y. Okay, so if you want to uh, go for a partial derivative a differential equation, I think what you have to do is, uh, you can guess now what is going on. So let's go for the easier one. So it will be D uh, easy one. So, so says D of F. Uh, so it will be a new function, say GXY. GXY in terms of X equals say D of GXY uh, in terms of Y. Okay. Then uh, let's forget about the boundary condition for the time being. And now uh, what should I, I think we have to call this G. GXY is needed. And the variables are, I think they will be needed to be in a uh, bracket, something like this. I guess we are not uh, talking about numerical solutions. So this is the easiest thing in the world, let's say. Yeah, so what, what they're saying is uh, the result is uh, result is C1 means now remember C1 followed by uh, square brackets. So 
what they are saying is this is a this is an arbitrary function of x and y so something like something like f of x plus y will will do right so this is what they are saying okay so if you i mean you can check that so if you get the partial derivative of uh, you know with respect to x x plus y so this will be So this will be this will be f prime x plus y and one okay and partial by partial y fx plus y will be the derivative of with respect to x plus y and one right so these two are equal these two are equal so the solution is uh, solution to partial f by partial x equals partial f by partial y will be a function of x plus y okay so that is what we put so now you can uh, uh, you can modify this uh, in uh, in any way you like right any question So I think we have answered all the questions. Uh, shall we move on to the ending of the session? Uh, if there is any question else, because people have asked about partial difference. Yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, Some people are asking, uh, please share the PDF file of this working space. Yeah, I will not only the working yes. space, but also. Uh, Also, the uh, one not five. I I can share that. Okay, sir. okay. Uh, we'll share among ourselves. Um, okay, I think uh, there are no more questions. Uh, uh, thank you very much sir, for the informative and interesting se session. Uh, with that, I think we have reached the end of the session. Uh, okay, there are some questions popping up. Uh, shall we move on to them, sir? Yeah, sure. Uh, can we do graphs from XY data sets? Yes, we can do. Uh, for example, say, You can see my uh, Mathematica working right space. You can see my screen, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, right. So uh, some people are asking how to uh, draw uh, graphs from sets x, y uh, in discrete sets. They're asking. Suppose one, three, and two, four, two, five, and say three, eight. Create uh, sorry, like that. So list plot, list plot is the command. List plot day will give you the data. Uh, Anything else? Maybe I will complete this last. Uh, be a lot of people are interested in like give me I'll uh, say two minutes to finish td right suppose um, suppose we are going for a 
uh, then one might want to calculate the numerical solution something like this so you have to go for the new okay then you will need boundary conditions now see uh, we are getting a partial with respect to uh, uh, x twice so you're expecting something like g zero y okay say a uh, function of y let's say let's say two and g partial with respect to uh, say x equals one plus uh, um, keeping y constant now something like say three and of course you will need another uh, variable that is keeping uh, y constant say at one suppose this is a function of x say x right okay so something like that i guess should work and you have to give the region of uh, what, what can we be it's like maybe two variables x from um, the zero to one y from so i'm giving uh, y at one so you want to do something like this okay yeah there may be some inconsistency for example the x equals so i'm saying g zero y equals two Okay, so if x equals zero and y equals one, I get to so so I'm, I'm trying to change this one as say zero. Yeah, see, so yeah, there are some you know contradictions in the boundary conditions. Okay, it seems. Right. So other than that, uh, I think you should be able to uh, find this function. So this must agree with the other ones. That, that is what is happening here. So can I put zero? So when y equals zero, y equals zero and x equals zero, I get zero. So when x equals one, y equals zero, so x equals one, I get one, right? So there is a problem. So one. Right, okay, now it's correct. Right, so you should be able to plot this. So if you want to uh, actually uh, do this, uh, say plot 3D, plot 3D, uh, what I can do? I can do G, Y, let's see whether this is going to be correct. So say G, x y slash dot so let me call this s okay so slash dot s and then say x goes from one to two and zero to one zero to one and y goes from one to two i think we now to evaluate this evaluate capitalize right so at least <laughs> it's a straight line of 
it looks to be a plane but you know you can do do things like this okay good night so i think i i answer almost everything you asked uh <clears throat> yes so at least we solved the is a uh, partial differential equation and uh, plotted it in the next slide i think uh, it's now to and half hours okay i think uh, what i'm suggesting is uh uh you know the the what is hard is this uh pre requirements so we started uh, from the beginning how to define variables and so on maybe if we can do a second one uh you will be able to go for uh higher uh, advanced topics <clears throat>